Hello and welcome back to another Royal Reviewer video and of course welcome to my home. So today's video is going to be a single topic video on something that has been banded around in the media for the past, I don't know, three, three and a half years. It's got to be about three and a half years now. So I finally want to give my thoughts and opinions on, with my applied knowledge of the royal family and the way that titles and styles work, I want to apply that to this latest outing of this story. So I am a little bit fed up of this story because it just keeps coming out in different forms time and time again. And I am, of course, talking about the swirling rumours that Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, or the Duchess of Sussex, minus the HRH that she does actually have but can't use, um, may consider running for office. And there has been a kind of a gap, a, va a casual vacancy, if you like, um, because uh, Californian Senator Diane F Feinstein, and is it Feinstein or Feinstein? I'm not entirely 100% sure. I'm not familiar with the person being from the UK, um, so I do apologise for any mispronunciation of names. But she has passed away at the age of 90. So I'm going to kind of read a bit of information and then kind of stop and give my thoughts and opinions all the way through. So we know that since stepping back and before becoming a member of the royal family, Meghan has made no secrets of, I think you could probably say, her left leanings in the political sense. And of course, she's always kind of spoken out um, about how women can change the world. So it may come as no surprise to many that Meghan's name has been banded around in Hollywood um, in over recent days as a long shot replacement for Californian Senator Diane Feinstein. Now, long shot replacement, I think, is the key word here because it is a long shot replacement. But we'll get into a few more details in a second about why I think it's a long shot. So, I mean, I think this is quite disrespectful to Diane anyway, but within minutes, mere minutes of her death being announced on Friday. And by the way, um, I think she just passed away of old age. So my condolences, I know uh, that of all of our viewers will go out to her family and friends at this time. But within mere minutes, <laughs> phones apparently lit up with speculation that the Duchess of Sussex could throw her hat in the ring to serve out the remaining 13 months of Diane's term. So, a major Democratic donor who is close to Californian Governor Gavin Newsom, again, someone I'm not familiar with, uh, who apparently he will choose Diane's replacement because of the 13 month term that's left, told that Meghan is definitely a long shot, but in the craziness that is US politics these days, it's not an impossibility. Crazier things have happened. That's one thing I can absolutely agree on, because in politics these days, anything can happen. Um, so it has produced a unique situation where uh, Newsom who apparently is described as a charismatic governor, who is considered a presidential frontrunner should anything happen to Joe Biden, has free reign to pick someone to replace Diane until the next election is held in November of 2024. So that's key. He was placed, so he's kind of like the kingmaker of this position. He was placed in a similar position in 2020 when uh, Biden chose another Californian senator, Kamala Harris, to be his running mate against Donald Trump. I do know Kamala um, and I know Donald Trump. Not personally, not personally. At the time, um, newspapers reported that a senior Labour Party source from the UK confirmed Meghan had been networking among senior Democrats with a view to building a grassroots campaign to fuel her political ambitions. I have no idea how true or untrue that is. So we'll just leave that as, as it is. Um, but a source has said that Governor Newsom had pledged to replace uh, Feinstein with a person of colour or a woman of colour. 
adding the problem he now faces is that all the best candidates have already announced they will be running uh, for uh, Feinstein's seat in November of 24. So it doesn't look like there's, um, well, it says here that there's not a lot of candidates. However, I don't know because I'm, I don't really, I'm not, you know, obviously on the scene of US politics. So I'm, there could be people, but here it says that there is not. Limited, I think. Um, so he can't elect any of those because the, um, it would be seen as a huge um, unfair advantage for them to already be in position. So if he puts any of the very good women candidates in the job now, he will be accused of favouritism, which I can understand. That is uh, a real criticism. Well, a real fear, I think. Um, so he needs to find a woman of colour who can do the job for 13 months and will agree to not stand against any of the seasoned politicians who have already thrown their hats into the ring. I mean, you know could have Megan's name written all over it. There are not that many women who fit the bill. I don't know if that's true, which is why Megan's name is being bandied about. Um, so, obviously, Megan, since arriving, has formed close uh, friendships with Gloria Steinem, a powerful force in the Democratic Party. Um, and a friend of Steinem's said... Gloria has been introducing Meghan to pivotal people within the party. Meghan is interested in politics more than anything else. That's where she believes her power is, but she has had to focus on making money. Again, no idea how true that is, but that is what has been bandied around. It is important to say that. So, what do I think about all of this? Um... It's a possibility. I mean, it is a distinct possibility. Nothing is impossible in today's political world, especially in UK and US politics. There's been so much craziness over the past, you know, four to eight years, really. So a few issues that I can foresee when it comes to titles and styles. Um, well, first of all, would Meghan actually want the position? I think a lot of... I think people are going to be divided. A lot of people will say, yes, she really will and she, she'd do well. A lot of people will say, kind of, no, she doesn't. Um, and it would be a complete disaster if she did. I don't know, because Meghan hasn't actually come out and said that. All we're hearing is kind of hearsay from different sources. So we have to kind of park that issue. So we, we're now in the realms of sort of hypothetical thinking um, hypothetical scenarios of what would happen if. And these are things that are worth discussing because there's some points. So if Meghan were to go for it and got selected for that, chosen for that position by the kingmaker, if you like, and held that position for 13 months, the main problem that I can foresee is her link to the British royal family. I'm not even sure whether someone who holds a British royal family or a UK title can actually take office. I'm not in entirely sure um, how that entirely works. But the one thing I think that most definitely would happen from the UK side, regardless of what um, the US side might decide, Meghan, I don't think, would be able to keep the HRH. Now, let's not forget, the HRH was given when she, uh, well, was... Um, was assumed as her spousal title to marrying a prince of the United Kingdom upon her marriage. So she is not an HRH by birth. She is one that has assumed it by who she has married. So it's a spousal title. Also, Harry and Meghan, well, Harry was given the Dukedom of Sussex uh, upon marriage. So I think the issue is not necessarily with the Dukedom of Sussex, which I think Harry and Meghan would be able to retain uh, if Meghan held any type of US office, political office. The problem would be with the HRH, which they still have. So they don't use it um, for everyday life, but they can use it on private forms and uh, on for, for private things behind the scenes. It, they still have it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So 
Megan as being an HRH, I don't think would be able to continue to hold office uh, or even assume office whilst having that title. And I think the UK would have to make moves at that point to strip her of the HRH. I don't think they would extend that to Prince Harry because it wouldn't be Harry that would be holding office in the US. I don't think he can because he's not a full US citizen, I don't think. Uh, and of course, um, you know, he, he holds those titles. I don't think he would want to give them up for anything. But Meghan, on the other hand, could find herself in a position very similar uh, to the Duchess of Windsor, of course, the late Wallace Simpson. Um, so Edward and Wallace, there's a few similarities, as we already know, um, kind of royal, uh, almost outcasts, if you like, although Harry and Meghan kind of self-elected outcasts. Um, whereas the Duchess of Windsor, Wallace, wasn't ever given the HRH, she was denied it, so she was the Duchess of Windsor, but she wasn't Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Windsor. Meghan has already been the, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex. But I think that the UK could potentially strip her of the HRH whilst leaving Harry with his so that she can carry on her political advances, if you like, or her political career unobstructed by that title. I don't think the uh, dukedom would affect because it wouldn't be recognised formally. Um, I mean, to be honest, the HRH wouldn't be recognised formally, but it would from the UK side. So if you see what I mean, um, dukedoms are not the, si not the same as an HRH. Um, people that are not HRHs can also have dukedoms. It's a peerage of the United Kingdom. So, for example, you can have royal dukes and non-royal dukes. A duke is a duke. They are the same level. Although some dukedoms come with land uh, and property that's amassed over the years. So some dukedoms that you inherit are more valuable. Royal dukedoms don't often come with land apart from the uh, dukedom of Lancaster and the uh, Duchy of Cornwall, the dukedom of Cornwall, which of course support, um, Lancaster supports the monarch and Cornwall supports the heir to the throne. But other than that, um, you know, the Dukedom of Edinburgh, the Dukedom of York, they don't come with any land attached to them. Neither does neither did the Dukedom of Cambridge or the Dukedom of Sussex. So a Duke is a Duke. The Duke of Northumberland is the same um, elevation, the same status as the Duke of Sussex, for example. Um, although one is incredibly more wealthier, the, <laughs> the Dukedom of Northumberland. Um, but it's the HRH that elevates that dukedom. So that's the one that actually matters. And I think that is the one that would be taken away from Meghan if ever she did assume office. So the question and the point is, how much does Meghan value her HRH? Um, would she be prepared, if she was selected, to give that up or have it taken away so that she could hold office for just 13 months. Although, you know, would her ambitions be higher and greater than that uh, post that 13 month position? I don't know. It could also give Meghan the opportunity maybe to um, claim further victimhood. Oh, you know, it's been taken away from me, something that's been taken away. Um, I don't know. The answer entirely lies with, you know, the kingmaker, if you like, and of course, Meghan. You know, one, will she seriously be considered or not? And then if she was seriously considered and offered that position, would she take it? Would that lust, um, I think, for power and influence and voice outweigh the gravitas of the styles and titles, even though they don't mean anything particularly in the US, um, would she give up that HRH for potential money making that could be going on behind the scenes? It's all very hypothetical and I do appreciate that this is something that has been going on for many, 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 many years and I think it will still rumble on um, until Eva Megan categorically says that she doesn't want um, any political advances or any political positions, or she actually just takes one and does it. 
Where does this leave Harry if she did? I mean, Harry, I think, would just carry on being being some kind of amoeba. That's kind of what he's been reduced to in his life in the US. He hasn't really done anything outside of, you know, talking about his royal life or making projects about things that he'd set up when he was a working royal. Harry, I don't think, has found himself yet. Whether or not he continues to live outside of the royal family, I mean people have been speaking about re, you know, the potential of rejoining the royal family, maybe I'll save that for another video. Um, but Harry has not found his feet at all. Um, you know, I would have thought maybe he could have carried on doing more public speaking, um, but then if Meghan's got her political advances she might not have time to write his speeches. I mean, I just, I just don't, I don't think he's found himself and I don't think he knows what path or direction he's on. Everything he's done, as I've just said, has been based on his past. There's nothing that he's done that's looking forward to the future, that's new, that's creative, that's innovative. We haven't seen any of that. Also, there's talk about Meghan uh, relaunching the TIG in some kind of uh, some kind of form, whether it's still called the TIG or something else, or returning to social media. Lots of whispers and rumours going on. Truth is, no one actually knows anything at the moment. And of course, there's still this huge storm um, surrounding, you know, these emails that came out under that Freedom of Information request that basically outed Harry and Meghan and their team. And let's not forget, although it was the team sending the emails, the book stops with, with, with the heads <laughs> and unfortunately that's Harry and Meghan. So although Harry and Meghan didn't actually send those emails, they preside over an organisation that they own, uh, that provides money for them and they obviously, you know, sanctioned that footage being used to promote her book in that Netflix documentary, which went against what the school said that it wanted uh, to happen with that footage with regards to the children. So although they signed release forms, um, it was it just wasn't in good form. Archwell and of course Harry and Meghan being the head of it did not respect the school's wishes and in truth the children were used to promote Meghan's book which of course made money for Harry and Meghan. Anyway I digress so I'm going to leave today's video here. Let me know your thoughts and opinions and comments. But also, if you are in the US, let me know people's feelings and thoughts on the ground. What are people saying? Is there an appetite for Meghan in politics? Let me know. So thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me, to you all, and goodbye.